So actually, these should be a fast. I mean, I was planning to attend there in person, then some personal matters happened. I was supposed to do a workshop and I was hoping to show you IPC in um, like working so that everyone had a, a chance to see what is this IPC. But uh, what I'm going to do now is try and pitch the system, get this in the back of your minds, and hopefully in the future uh, we can get in touch because, like right now, what we're trying to do with IPC is getting into production now that FDM is out. And the idea behind IPC is a way of scaling, uh, so adding consensus to existing distributed systems and having a way of scaling Falcon. And in this talk, what I, my idea is to give you like a glimpse of what is the system and hopefully we can have follow-ups and see if we are a match to your projects or whatever you are doing in the, in the scope of computation or, or any other system. Really briefly, like, where does this IPC idea come from? Well, with Web3, what we're trying to do is decentralize a lot of the critical systems that we have out there, like for instance, the internet, uh, computation as, as many of the projects in this track. And uh, one of the core modules of Web3 are blockchains. And unfortunately, there's a key part in blockchains, which is the consensus layer, that it's, uh, it has some limitations. And if we look at today's uh, technology, if we go to the like OG, uh, um, systems like Bitcoin and Ethereum, what we see is that uh, we will never be able to scale them, at least in their current state, to the kind of loads that we have in Web2 and the kind of loads that the projects around computation, like the ones you've been pitching in this track, uh, need. Because we have around like seven and a few thousand transactions per second. But even if we go to these like next generation uh, blockchain systems where supposedly um, they are able to reach up to the thousand and millions of transactions. There are also a limitation in the consensus layer because in the end we are limited as they sequentialize, just sequentialize every operation and every transactions, they are limited by the specifications and by the performance of the validators running that, that uh, consensus layer. So the idea behind IPC was to try and, and achieve these kinds of goals. So in the end, we want to start um, accommodating the Web2 loads into Web3 as we advance the technology. So we want around uh, the giga and the tera transactions per second of throughput in our systems and have consistency and like security over these systems uh, with this amount of load. Ideally, I think that this is something that not every blockchain approaches, which is fast, optimistic, local finality. So right now we're seeing that in order to run a transaction, generally, I mean, there are caveats because some, some projects are building workarounds around this, but uh, generally it's hard to achieve below one second transactions, even when the validators are in the same data center. The idea is that some use cases may need like fast finality or at least fast optimistic finality, and we'll be able to settle the more like um, secure requirements um, further up, and uh, but we cannot fine tune the the. There's no consensus that is one size fits all to every application. So the idea behind IPC is to not only accommodate this kind of web to scale um, loads, but also be able to fine tune the underlying consensus algorithm and underlying blockchain to fit the needs of our applications. And along with this, uh, we want to achieve like censorship resistance, partition tolerance, secure global finance, the kind of things that other blockchains are trying to tackle. And the way that IPC achieves this is through horizontal scaling. So the same way that we horizontally scale um, our AWS instances whenever we have more load, the idea is that let's, um, our idea was let's build a framework where instead of like explicitly partitioning the state or explicitly partitioning how uh, transactions are validated like in many other sharding proposals, let's try and build a framework that allow users to deploy horizontally the, the kind of blockchains and the kind of, of consensus layers that, that, that they need. And this is the, the idea behind um, IPC. So uh, it's an on-demand horizontal scalability for Falcon, where what we're trying to do is to build a hierarchy where users are able to deploy their new uh, let's call blockchain substrates or consensus substrates uh, that anchor their security to the upper layer uh, networks, like for instance, um, Falcon. So it would be kind of like um, building a layer two or a layer three or a recursive um, secondary layers of blockchains where instead of having a out of the box uh, blockchain, you would be able to fine tune the blockchain to, to what you need. So in the end, you will be able to choose your consensus algorithm, choose your security trade-offs, because as I mentioned, like there's no easy way to, to find the best like trade-off for every kind of application, like some computation systems 
may not require that much security, but they want to go fast. And then if you're doing a DeFi uh, application, you may want a lot of security and you don't mind if finality is a bit slower. So that's the idea behind IPC, to give a framework that allows you to do this kind of stuff. And to give you a high level overview of how is this being deployed, let's consider the Filecoin network, Filecoin mainnet, which is currently our what we call our rootnet. So it's our anchor of trust from which all of the subnets are, go are going to be spawned and from which we are going to um, start building our new layer twos and layer threes recursively. So Falcon has a 30 seconds block time and like many more blocks of finality, which makes it not great for certain applications, especially when you need like fast finality and fast block times. So the idea is that with, um, with IPC, you will be able to deploy new networks that are able to interact uh, seamlessly with the Falcon, with the states in the Falcon network, but go a bit faster and like do local operations faster. So this is the case of SpaceNet, sorry. Um, and SpaceNet is one of, uh, so it's our test network where we're deploying IPC and all of the innovations that we're doing at, at Consensus Lab. And this is a test net that it's exactly like uh, Filecoin, but with a new consensus algorithm that is called MIR and that uh, allows us to have one second block times. So in this way, of someone that is trying to, to have like high performance and have um, a blockchain that goes really fast and with fast finality, they will go to SpaceNet. And with SpaceNet, we will be able to still interact with state and fiber. But the idea is that we wouldn't like one second finality with a, a few dozens of validators may not be enough for certain uh, applications. So they will be able to deploy, for instance, their subnet um, like spawn a new subnet from, from SpaceNet that um, anchors their security to SpaceNet and recursively to Falcon and build their application like that. So the idea is in this way to be able to build um, a hierarchy of different kinds of blockchains that anchor their security and are able to interact uh, seamlessly between each other and deploy the consensus layer and the, con and the blockchain substrate to the needs of their, of their application. And this is, uh, sorry, and just uh, to give you a bit of technical details, uh, how is this powered is that there are two user-defined FVM, FVM actors that are the ones that handle all of the interactions between all of these, uh, all of these blockchain substrates and handle all of the interoperability, anchoring the, the security, uh, exchanging the messages and so on. So how would, would this work? Uh, if we have a rootnet um, if, and we want to deploy a new subnet, the first thing that we do is like we request the deployment of a new subnet in, in the rootnet. We see here that uh, we will deploy an actor that governs the, the policy of the subnet and this will trigger in its own the, the different subnets and this is something that we can do uh, recursively. Uh, as I said, this is um, this is run by two main IPC, oh, sorry, so by two main FVM um, actors. And there's, so there's a lot of on-chain logic between all of these actors. And then there's an off-chain, uh, let's call it peer implementation or process that is the APC agent, which is the one that orchestrates the exchange of messages between the different blockchains. So for instance, if you have an application that wants to interact with the subnet and with the mainnet and like wants to interact with several of these networks to, to implement their, their operation, they will interact with an IPC agent that it's the, it's the key co off-chain component that uh, knows how to speak the IPC protocol and knows how to speak to the different subnets and the different rootnets that are part of your application. So you define in your config, what are the, the subnets in the system that you want to interact with? And it will abstract for you all of the operations. And like when you wanna, I don't know, um, put more collateral, if you want to send a message, if you wanna send a cross-net message, it handles for you all of this back and forth with the, with the underlying blockchain substrates. And these subnets that I'm mentioning in the end is just a, a, a fork of Lotus. So um, when I'm saying that we deploy a subnet, uh, the peer implementation of each of these subnets is just a fork of Lotus with a modified consensus algorithm and some other modifications. But in the end, it's the same kind of uh, good old um, stack that we're used to. So uh, we use IPLD for the the data store, we use FVM for all the runtime of the blockchain and like all of the types, the kind of types and the semantics of the blockchain that the subnet substrates are the same as we see in Falcon. And this is uh, really interesting because it means that we have content addressed um, subnets and content addressed blockchains as we would have uh, currently in the Falcon mainnet. 
Um, yeah, and as I mentioned, like uh, if you want to start giving a try to IPC, uh, I will tell that, the, I mean, the entry point is this APC agent, which is a off-chain uh, process that handles all of the, all of the interaction with the different summits. So uh, if, for instance, we want to have like an application that requires these three levels of, of subnets, you would have like a full node replica for each of these uh, peers that are that is syncing with the network, and then your IPC agent will abstract all of this uh, complexity of interacting with the different blockchains, and will give you all of the operations that you need to to handle like all of this complex hierarchy um, and all of the state of these of these networks. And to leave you this as a food for thought, uh, when and how can IPC be useful? So if you need consistency in your data or in, in some operations that have happened in, in a distributed system and you don't have a way of like handling this because if you go to Ethereum or some other like slower network, it makes no sense. So this can be um, a good first use case for IPC or if you have this problem, use case uh, like IPC may, may help you uh, solve it or at least tackle it. Then we have, um, for instance, use cases that require faster finality and higher throughput. So I guess some of the builders are having some trouble with these 30 second times of Falcon mainnet. So the idea is that when we release IPC, you will be able to deploy your subnet and um, have faster finality and faster block times if you need so. Um, also like spot in the end, you saw that uh, I didn't go into the details, but like uh, deploying a subnet is just deploying a, an actor, uh, an FVM actor over a network, which means that it's kind of cheap to deploy your own subnet and try a few things and you can make subnets ephemeral and like it, it's really low barrier and low overhead to deploy a subnet. And this is gonna be really interesting when we want to have ephemeral subnets with a small number of, of members that want to run some kind of job or agree on something and then uh, like report the result into the, into the Falcon mainnet or whatever rootnet that they're using. And also it's really interesting when you need verifiable computation or uh, incentive mechanism, because in the end with this consensus layer, you can uh, define all these semantics and you can define like how a set of members in a distributed systems need to agree on something, all leveraging like uh, the consensus layer that we're giving and the FVM as a runtime. And there's a bunch of resources that I share here uh, where you can start learning about IPC because I just had 15 minutes and I didn't know how to put all of the knowledge forward. But like we already have uh, SpaceNet, which is the IPC testnet where you can start tinkering with deploying your own subnets. Um, you have a bunch of design docs and like analysis around the, all of the research that we did to deploy the system. And if you have any kind of question, we have these Falcon Slack channels like Consensus, IPC, and SpaceNet, where you can ask us questions and, and like we can get you through um, starting to use IPC. So IPC is currently without uh, CrossNet messages in SpaceNet. And by the end of this week, hopefully we will have also CrossNet messages. So between the different subnets, you will be able to interact um, seamlessly by sending messages to some smart contract that may live in some other subnet. And if you want to run, um, as I said, like the IPC agent is your entry point to IPC. In the README, you can see a lot of getting started uh, tutorials and like uh, some um, notes on how to run uh, your first IPC subnet. The both like the docs and the tech is still a bit rough because it's quite new. So <laughs> let's say this is the bleeding edge. There may be a lot of uh, potential bugs or, or, or rough edges that needs to be uh, polished, so feel free to open issues to directly ping me if you have any problem and, and, and let's discuss how we can improve the tech. This is the roadmap to give you a, a high level overview. So we are here in the M1, sorry, this now we call it M2, but here in M2 where IPC is going to be deployed on SpaceNet, this is happening. Look, so we had the first phase of this uh, in the end of March and this is happening this week. So hopefully from this week, you will be able to test in the SpaceNet testnet uh, deploying new subnets, and we are aiming for Q2 or beginning of Q3 for the deployment of SpaceNet in Falcon mainnet so that you can start testing subnets, not only in testnet, but also over the actual Falcon. And that's all from my side. Sorry about like the, the questions. I was hoping to have a bit more of time to introduce IPC, but this is just like, uh, take this just as a, as a pitch for you to at least know what IPC is and feel free to just ping me if, one, if you want any follow-up or you want to discuss this day.
Thank you very much. And yeah, if, have, if there are questions, for, we can probably take them, I think. So I had one question. Could you please tell me, you mentioned that verification is faster than 30 seconds. Do, do you have like, any uh, numbers? So the reason is because we are, I mean, in the end, we're running a BFT like consensus, right? So you can go as fast as the round, the rounds of BFT that you need to do. So it, not, it doesn't depend on the amount of computation that you need to do. It depends on like the, the latency of and, and the delay, the RTTs and the number of messages that you exchanged with the rest of the validators. So right now in SpaceNet, we have a thousand validators and uh, we have less than a second block times because in the end, it's just the time of like executing the, so it's like any other consensus algorithm in a blockchain. You run the, the block, you trigger the state changes, see if they are consistent with the rest of the network and if they are, you can go. So it's more of a distributed systems. Yeah, thanks.